All right. Well, I'm happy to be here at Cold Steel. Um, and right on time for these production samples of the AD10 and AD15. So we'll start with the AD10. It does look exactly like my custom knife. Uh, contouring is great. The grind's great. The uh, two-tone finish looks exactly alike. I would say that, you know, for my customers, I actually had some people kind of upset. They said, well, it's not so exclusive anymore or whatever. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of differences. One is the price. You know, the custom comes in at about $1,400. And the uh, production version comes in, I think, the retail is, what, two two fifty. dollars So, um, you know, there's a, there's a lot of differences there. But this is a very, very good representation of the custom in a production format. It does have an S35 VN blade. This particular one is hollow ground. Uh, heavy point, hollow ground, try to do the 8010s with a pretty heavy substantial point and then a deep high hollow ground here. False edge, two-tone finish, and this beautifully CNC machine G10. I mean that is that is contoured and finished. I, I would say every bit as good as my own customs. Uh, the other standing out difference between the custom and this is this does have aluminum liners and an aluminum backspacer to keep the cost down. You have a really strong, great likeness of the custom AD10 that everybody can afford. And one of the things that I get on Instagram, I see a lot as I post my customs, guys will say, man, I love that knife or I love the AD15, but I'll never, I'll never be able to afford it. And, uh, you know, I know how that is. There's a lot of things I could never afford, too. And so just because you can't afford the custom doesn't mean you don't deserve, you know, a super cool knife that you really like the looks of or the feel of. So I'm really happy to be able to, uh, you know, share this design with Cold Steel. So everybody gets a chance to own this awesome knife. The AD15. Again, it's 99% the same look. Uh, finish and fill is the custom. The standout difference is that it has a one-piece CNC machine aluminum liner. So if you said, hey, why does the AD15 cost more than the AD10 while the production or the custom knives are different? It's because that this is all CNC machine in one piece. And uh, mine are titanium. The customs are titanium, but they're pinned together. And I actually have one. You can see that. This might be a little dirty. So it's the same, I mean, when, I, when we made this in production, I shared my same um, CAD files, everything with the uh, um, subcontractor. So the handle is relatively the exact same. The only difference again is the materials. The custom has titanium, 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 and the production has a, an aluminum, we call this the yoke, yoke or upper, line or upper frame, and then the uh, stainless steel scales. S35 VM blade, flat ground, pretty pointy, but still substantial, two-tone finish, and wonderful addictive one-hand operation. Once you start using this, I tell guys, you know, I have a lot of customers, and they have a lot of great knives, and I say, I will warn you, once you get on the AD15 and how user-friendly it is, you simply lift the yoke away from the blade, Kind of like a uh, nutcracker and then you'll get on it with one hand a lot of people will hold it like this and just push the blade away typically I just kind of pinch the yoke and shut it with my thumb and it's there's a big play with factor here too so cool knife I have done plenty in this um, aggressive texture g10 CNC machine so on this one, it is all CNC machined, CNC machined, and of course with the premium steels, beautiful two-tone finishes, and uh, you know I'm really happy how these turned out, and I think they're great representations at a fraction of the cost of the customs and the other uh, knives I produce. So very excited. What am I? You know why is it that much? Well, I'm making it entirely in my house in my garage with really expensive equipment that it's taken me 20 years to buy you know so 
CNC machine is expensive. It's my CNC machine I have now costs more than my first house. So, you know, it's expensive to do a full custom knife or a machine knife in your house. It's just like going to the, you know, the, go to the patent attorney. He's like, hey, it's 300 bucks an hour. I'm like, oh, <laughs> you know, $300 an hour. So for a, a young guy to say, man, I just can't afford that 675 I, I feel you. You know, I couldn't afford a $675 knife for a long time either. Uh, but that doesn't mean that you can't do a really awesome production version of that. That what's the retail on this? Two, two. I don't know. If it's two sixty or something. So how it's did, less than half the cost of mine. Yeah. How did you come about with the Scorpion Lock? Scorpion Lock was a funny one. I was doing the. It used to be a wonderful show, the Ohio Custom Classics show, and I was making my eighty ten models, and uh, such a hard hard knife to make as the Triad Lock. The tolerance on the lock is five tenths. That's point zero 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 five, one half of a thousandth. Now realize a piece of paper measures at four thousandths of an inch. Huh. So if you took a paper and divided it by four, and then by half again, that's the tolerance. <laughs> and again, when you're in your garage making these, it's like holy crap, is that you know? I always made a joke. I'd be on Saturday, I'd be making a rocker. And you spend all day cutting it out and making it, and then you're buffing it, and you just buff too much off, and bang. At the end of the day, I'm f eight hours later, I'm further behind than I was this morning, and I'm really mad. Yeah. So I was sleeping the night before the show. I had worked late, a bunch of, ni bunch of nights, and um, I was falling asleep. I thought, man, it would be cool if there was... There's some... It's hard to see, but there's some unique angles in there. And the greater the angle, the better the performance. But the greater the angle, the harder the lockup is. So if we change this internal angle from 84 to 82 degrees, that 5 tenths, 0, 0, 0, 5 would go even worse. It would be like 0, 0, 0, 4. Mm -hmm. So I thought, man, there'd be, there was a way that I could just make something that was just a, just a round slot. And how would you do that? But it has, if you really look in there, it has a little bit of, little bit, there's a little bit of secret shaping in there yeah. that keep it from... You know, this is not like super impact resistant because so eventually the force will carry this out, but you know, your hands on it. So it is grip enhanced. But anyway, I was, um, I was laying in bed and I was like, man, that thing is such a pain to make. What could I do differently? And not only that, the rocker, whatever goofy shapes and angles are in the, ro or in the blade tang, those opposite shapes are in the rocker that mate together because they have the only thing I remember from school, complementary congruent angles, okay? So when your rocker, when your blade tang is like this, that rocker is bang on there. That's your complement, complementary congruent angle. So there's some equals whatever. I don't know. I don't remember that. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing I learned in school. So yeah, school is helpful. <laughs> but anyway, so, and, that, and that's really hard to, to match up. So then I thought, wow, if I could just avoid making that rocker. And I thought, well, a pin is the best thing. So I was sleeping, and I just was like, you know how you kind of think of your day and your sleep? Yeah. And I just was like, wow, if I had a pen that would go in there, how can I do that? But you can't, how can you get a pen? So I was laying there, and I was like, oh, man, if I, if I just made like a frame lock with a pen that dropped down in. So I woke up, I have a tablet beside my bed. I woke up, I sketched it out, my wife's like, what are you doing? I go, I have this good idea. You know, I drew it out, and then I went to sleep. Then the next morning we get up early for the show, like 4 a.m. I look at, oh, look over. I'm like, oh yeah, that's a pretty good idea. I should try that. So <laughs> after the show, I came back and uh, I, I made one, and it so quickly worked. And I had so much trial and error and um, about these lockup angles fitting and not wobbling and staying in real well. And then I made I made my first one. And usually when you make, you know, mechanisms are my thing and uh, it's, you know, if, if I fell down and cracked my head open, a little locking mechanism with wings would fly out of my head. <laughs> That's how much I think about locking stuff. And um, It shows in your production. Well, I told, I told Mike, the other knife maker I work with, in 1993 I told him, if you could just design a really good lock, you could probably just smooth sailing in knife making. So, like, since then I've been thinking about and making different, I can't tell you how many different... Uh, 
you know, like locking mechanisms I've made. And then I found out that they were already out there or something similar. Um, so it's kind of like a hobby. But so yeah, I came out and, and made that. And the very first one went together and it was like, wow, no play. And it unlocks, you know, because you can make a lock that works. Like, hey, this knife kind of works, yeah. you know. Yeah. But is it going to be strong? And then you can make one that's really strong. You can take a frame lock and a lot of spring tension on that, that leaf. Then you can unlock it. It's like, so to make a knife that's really strong, a lock that's really strong, but something you can actually unlock in a smooth opening, you know, it's one thing to design a lock. Then you have to design it so it's very durable, hopefully strong. You know, and guys, if you like another knife with a weak lock, that's fine, you know, but people say, well, your yeah, lock strength's not that important. Well, it's a lock, you know. Do you want to, do you want shitty seat belts in your car? Yeah. Like, do you ever want a lock yeah. to fail? Do you, you do you want a front door? You ever, yes, you know, any, any normal front door can be kicked in, but do you want one that you just push on and, and your door unlocks? It should be strong. So, you know, to make a lock that's easy to operate, easy to unlock, reliable, it's a, it's, it's like a three-headed beast. But that's kind of like my uh, favorite thing to do. And so I'm always working on them. This is what we have now. Well, you definitely have set kind of the, uh, set the tone in the industry as far as lock mechanisms. And uh, everyone's very excited about your AD15 Scorpion Lock, uh, bringing it to the market, like you said, bringing it at an affordable price for everybody. And uh, we really appreciate you taking the time to, to talk to us about it today. Thank you. Happy to be here and happy to show it off a little bit.